In politics, there are principles and there are interests. Amid the fight against ISIS as Russia backs Bashar al-Assad, of late there's been a lot of talk about principles, values, the moral high ground. But do the values of the French Republic intersect with its interests? The French Prime Minister is in Saudi Arabia, flanked by an A-list of cabinet members. Manuel Valls there to drum up some 10 billion euros worth of deals, everything from patrol boats and satellites to a new metro for Mecca, a much-needed boost for a fledgling French economy. It's happening in the country where jail blogger Raif Badawi has been publicly flogged, where a 17-year-old Shiite activist is on death row, and in a kingdom that's already carried out 175 executions this year. Paris insists human rights were brought up behind closed doors, and that tactful diplomacy is what works. It's hard not to engage with the nation that sits on one-third of the world's known oil reserves, the French drawing closer in the build-up to the uh, recent Iranian nuclear deal. And when President Hollande was recently invited to a Gulf Cooperation Council summit, it was more than about the money. The monarchy's allies against Assad, who've committed to the fight against ISIS, even while they're accused of backing various other shades of Sunni militants, the uh, Gulf monarchies uh, who are also uh, leading a bloody intervention against Iran-allied militias in Yemen. We'll ask if we're headed towards a hardening of that Sunni-Shia divide or if a political breakthrough is indeed possible. Today in the France Venquette debate, the Saudi dilemma. With us to talk about it from the U.S. Capitol, former political analyst at the Embassy of Saudi Arabia in Washington, Fahad Nazer of defense consultants JTG Inc. Thanks so much for being with us again. Thank you for having me. Uh, joining us here in the studio, French Senator Nathalie Goulet, Hi. who is a member of the France GCC uh, group in Parliament. I'm leading it. Leading it, in yeah. fact, uh, and uh, member of the Foreign Affairs Committee. Also in the company of uh, Miriam Benrad, research associate at uh, the French Political Science Institute, Sciences Po. Welcome back. Thank you. And welcome back to Didier Chaudet, who uh, is uh, with the foreign policy think tank. How do, you, how do you say it? Is it CAP, C-A-P-E? CAP, yeah. In, uh, in what, is it, what does that stand for? It will be for, uh, for Center of the Analysis of Foreign Policy, as simple as that. Okay, there you go. The Center for the, for the Analysis of Foreign Policy. Thanks for being with us. The France Van Gette Debate, where you can join the conversation, and you have on Facebook and Twitter, hashtag F24Debate. The French Prime Minister taking the direct approach in stating the aim of the visit where he spoke to business leaders over dinner Monday. Je voudrais donc ce soir... I would like to give our Saudi friends a simple message. Come to France. Come invest in our country. At the heart of Europe. This is the right time. More than ever, it is the time to come. It is the best time because my country is reforming. Nathalie Goulet, your thoughts on, 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 on the war, that message by by the Prime Minister and that potential 10 billion euros worth of deals? Yeah. So what? We need the job. So, um, you know, if, if France is not doing it, somebody else will do it. So that the rules of the commercial issue now, you know, with the aggressive competitivity and concurrency. So if France has, an, has now this market as in the past, I think that we have to support the prime minister to create job in this country. Miriam Benran? Um, I won't judge uh, or we can discuss um, the parameters of this diplomacy but clearly France now is uh, engaged in a business diplomacy. It has been engaged in a business diplomacy in the region, in the Gulf for some time now with a certain number of priorities. The Saudi market has become clearly a target for the French uh, economy um, with the development of relations, investments, etc. Um, of course the real issue is um, to what extent does this articulate a foreign policy at the time when we know Saudi Arabia is involved in so many uh, files, so many crises. Uh, we are also, um, of course, dealing with the Islamic State crisis, Syria, Iraq. Um, I hope we will discuss these uh, points in the debate because I think the real um, question is to what extent does this deepening of the French-Saudi relationship articulate a coherent intelligent policy for the region as a whole 
knowing that we're facing all of those threats, the Islamic State, but much, 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 so much beyond. Is, the, is that relation about the money? or is it's, I think it's about business. It's about money, let's be clear. Uh, I think the, the question of human rights has been uh, basically postponed. Um, there have been uh, discussions about this. Uh, it's been the same uh, with the Egyptians, for example, when Hollande visited uh, Sisi in Egypt. But the fact is that there is a very realistic, even in my taste, cynical approach currently, which basically puts business before any uh, other consideration. Let's be honest, we can discuss, but um, I don't think France is putting much pressure on the human rights question, on the respect of the rule of law, democracy, and all of this. It's become... Um, Second, uh, you know, second thoughts for the French, and I don't think the French really believe, in any case, now in the opportunity of, you know, supporting a political change in which they don't believe themselves, and which explains why they are being supporting uh, conservative, if not in my in my view, uh, um, conservative powers when not uh, backward. Uh, policies uh, which clearly don't go, uh, don't take the direction of, of positive change. But we can discuss this uh, further in the discussion. Fad Nazer, do you agree that this closening of ties between Paris and Riyadh is down to the fact that uh, uh, there's a lot of money to be made after all the Saudis financing the recent sale of Rafale fighter jets to Egypt, for instance? Is it about the money? No, I think business uh, is one dimension of this relationship, for sure. And it's my understanding that uh, President Hollande's uh, appeal to the Saudis has been answered. Uh, I believe the Saudi government has committed to investing $10 billion in, uh, in uh, funds and small businesses in France. Uh, at the same time, the Saudis are also interested in, uh, in French money and French experience and French companies doing business in Saudi Arabia. There's currently a business forum taking place uh, at this time. So certainly uh, business and trade is, a, is one dimension of this. But I think there's a lot more to it than that. I think that Saudi Arabia um, sees danger all around it. You have uh, in the south, you have Yemen that was on the verge of yet another civil war. In the north, you have Iraq, where uh, ISIS is uh, wreaking havoc. And Iraq, frankly, is also on the verge of uh, civil war itself. Across the Gulf, you have Iran, which is obviously Saudi Arabia's biggest foe in the region. And um, as all this is happening and there's uh, security threats coming from every angle, there's a perception in Saudi Arabia that its traditional and closest uh, security ally, the United States, has decided to disengage from the, re re from the region. And when it did decide to engage, it decided to, uh, to do so with Iran, which is Saudi Arabia's biggest foe. So uh, really, I think France uh, presents a very um, attractive uh, partner. Its relationship with uh, Saudi Arabia goes for many years. This is not new. Uh, Saudi Arabia and France seem to, uh, to share common ground on many political issues. Saudi Arabia and, and France, I think, uh, see eye to eye in, in Syria. They both don't see a, a role for uh, President Assad in the future. Uh, it's my understanding that France today expressed strong support for uh, the Saudi-led coalition in Yemen. Uh, Saudi Arabia and France obviously cooperated very closely uh, in regards to uh, Lebanon. And as you mentioned, there's also some cooperation in terms of providing or meeting some of Egypt's uh, defense needs. So there's common ground. Uh, the French have been very willing to, to assist Saudi, Saudi Arabia with its security needs, with uh, providing weapons, uh, training, but also politically. I think, I think there is a lot, quite a bit of shared uh, common ground there. I interesting in what Fahad Nazer just said, Didier Chaudet, uh, part of it is a message to Washington. Uh, of course, it is a question of money and it is a question of geopolitics. I think we can forget about morality here. Uh, if France ever had the high ground in that level a few years ago, now it's, tota it's totally gone and it's okay. It's business as usual. You say it's okay. Uh, I, I, I'm a think tanker and I'm a consultant. Don't count on me to talk about morality here, very honestly. Uh, what I see is France being part of a competition to have access to markets. Now the big question is, if we begin to push away morality on uh, Saudi Arabia, Arabia, where do we stop? Why do we have such a strong opposition on Iran, as if Iran was uh, the only problem in the Middle East? Uh, why do we have this position on, uh, on Yemen, when you can look at the Yemenite point of view, that uh, the situation in Sana'a has been disastrous, the destruction of the old city has been terrible? 
and it has been also the responsibility of the uh, uh, Arab co coalition that, uh, that is led by Saudi Arabia. Uh, so here, yes, it is a message sent to Washington uh, DC, but is it really the good message for, for, for France? The big question is, are we, thinking, uh, are we thinking about our interest in the longer term in Syria, in Yemen, in the Middle East? Mm -hmm. All right. At what point do human rights trump business interests? This Tuesday, the UK government pulling out of a £5.9 million deal to sell prison expertise to Saudi Arabia a deal which had divided David Cameron's cabinet. The justice minister wanted to pull the plug. The foreign minister said it was too late. The Times of London reporting that there was a robust exchange of views. The Ministry of Justice had human rights concerns. The Foreign Office felt this would have far bigger ramification. The final straw, though, uh, Nathalie Goulet, was uh, this uh, talk of the public flogging of a man in his, a British citizen in his 70s for having made wine at home. Also, it's and, eight, yeah. And so, so the UK in this instance pulling out of a 5.9 million pound deal. Well, you know, make the first round, I didn't know that we have to express all our, our subject, included geostrategic, so I just... But we'll uh, talk more about geostrategy yeah, later, don't yeah. worry. Well, I'm, I'm worried because, you know, the, there is a, a special window as you mentioned previously, President Hollande was guest of the GCC Council, which is the first time in history that a French, European, and, and a foreign and non-Arabic country was invited to this uh, GCC. And uh, more um, United States is going to work with Iran, uh, more the Saudis are going to check for another ally. And this other ally is the French. Is the France. So we, we need it. I mean, it's, it's an interest marriage, you know, marriage of interest, something like that. But regarding the human right, I think that we are using something called that soft diplomacy. And I'm sure that um, um, Laurent Fabius and the prime minister uh, probably talk about that. But um, I think their choice is, uh, is just to, to use soft diplomacy instead of uh, uh, publicize it. Because those kind of country with those kind of governance, they don't need any lesson of moral of other people. They don't like it. And uh, we are not uh, teaching them everything. We, we, we cannot make them progress like that. And think that we need to cooperate more. But for Saudi Arabia, we are almost in middle age. All right, but uh, what, what does, should France do? For instance, if this 17-year-old um, this activist who was c sentenced to death when he was 17, uh, Ali Mohammed Al Nimr. Yeah. If he's executed, what would France do in that case? I heard that uh, uh, Prince Salman was almost uh, um, ready to release him. I, I read that today. I think that probably the French minister told about that with him. I, I don't think it will be. He will be killed. I, I'm not. I don't think so. Fahad Nazer, how should Western leaders talk on human rights with the Saudi Kingdom? Well, I think the um, Saudi government has made it very clear that uh, it considers some of these, uh, Mr. Nemr's case and other cases, to be a strictly a domestic policy issue. And uh, really, they, they consider it to be a, a question of sovereignty. Um, one of your guests, uh, I think, said it correctly, that they don't uh, like other countries lecturing them on, on human rights. Um, so, you know, whether this comes up or not, uh, I'm not sure. However, I mean, there's, there's a perception, I think, in the West that, um, you know, Saudi Arabia has a, 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 you know, a bad human rights record. And, well, you know, it, it does leave, uh, you know, much to be desired. I mean, if, if you want to look at a truly oppressive, uh, brutal regime, you, you need uh, look no further than Assad. Um, one of the things about the Arab Spring, I mean, it's, it's a, obviously it was a very controversial time. Uh, in the history of the Middle East. However, one thing that it did clarify is this notion that all Arab regimes are the same. This used to be an, a an adage that was uh, repeated in the West, and frankly, uh, a lot of people in the Middle East also used to repeat it. But that's clearly not the case. Uh, Assad, I think, sh uh, showed his true colors and really showed himself to be the most brutal uh, regime um, in the region, for sure. Now, there's been some, uh, and, and he's essentially killed 200,000 uh, of his own people in the span of uh, four years. There's, there's been some protests in Saudi Arabia, and about 20 people have died in that same um, uh, span of time. So uh, I think we need to keep uh, some perspective here. Miriam Belanda. 
Well, I, I, I agree. I mean, as I said, I think the priority for the French now is, is real politic on many issues regarding the Middle East. We've seen this, we're seeing this with the Saudis, business diplomacy and opportunities that are more prevalent now for the French than uh, so-called uh, defense of human rights, democratization, etc. I think the French have renounced um, the grand uh, ideal of political change, democratic transition in the region, which is also the result, I believe, of the French looking at American failures and uh, questioning their own intervention. And we are, we, we've, we're seeing this with Libya. Um, I think there was much uh, enthusiasm in 2011 regarding the Arab Spring, <coughs> the Libyan uprising, Great the French partner. basically embracing this very interventionist policy uh, and um, democratic ideal. Mm. And um, if we're looking at Saudi Arabia, uh, Egypt, where uh, thousands of people are sentenced to death, uh, thrown uh, into jail, sometimes with no motive, with no uh, legitimate uh, reason, Basically, my view is that the French are ignoring this voluntarily. They don't want to interfere. And as I said, uh, they are favoring uh, business over other moral considerations, which is not very coherent. I don't really uh, think there should be a classification of atrocities or the most brutal regimes. The fact is that there is no Middle East and North Africa policy now. We used to have a tradition of Arab policy in France, uh, a tradition of, of, of regional, a regional approach to, the, to, to these issues, which no longer exists. We have a very fragmented policy. We're dealing with each country um, on its own. We have no vision of the Middle East, let's be frank. It's the same with the US, but the French is also facing its own limits, their own limits regarding where the Middle East is going and what we should do. But I see a lot of cynicism a lot of real politic and also in a way a lot of disenchantment with the region and the prospects for change. And I, I tend to see the same phenomenon on the American side now. All right, that, that, that point about no coherent Middle East policy, we're gonna pick up on it when we come back. Stay with us, you're watching the France Vanquette debate.